Hello and welcome back to another episode of Hornet Nation. I'm Dan Schantz. And I'm Spencer Burgess. Today we will learn about Title IX, sit down with the boys varsity baseball coach, and recap the girls softball game of the week. All this and more on another episode of Hornet Nation. Throughout the years of Saline Athletics, we have been well known for the success of both our male and female athletes. With help of government legislation, we have the chance for all athletes, both male and female, to receive equal opportunity. Hallie Fox tells us more. Title IX is well known among many high school students, mainly because it serves as a guideline for athletic programs across the country that ensures that no student shall be discriminated against on the basis of sex. Basically what we're looking at is making sure that male and female athletes have equal opportunity. We want to continue to make decisions that um, take the Saline Athletic Department closer and closer to equality. Some big decisions were made last spring regarding the female facilities and scheduling. If you have been to a game on the varsity field this year, you probably noticed the new enclosures that were purchased in order to give teams like girls soccer a chance to stay dry during rainy spring games. Another change was the decision to make sure the girls lacrosse team was able to have all of their games on the varsity field instead of the auxiliary field. I just feel like all our varsity teams should be playing in the varsity stadium. Just by the nature of the name of that stadium being auxiliary, why would we want our female athletes playing auxiliary and our male athletes from the boys lacrosse team having access to the main field? Mr. Evanson seemed hopeful when asked about his vision for Saline Athletics with respect to gender equality. The number one goal is to make sure that all our athletes feel like they have opportunity to be recognized as an athlete at Saline. Not a female athlete or a male athlete, but an athlete. To me, it seems the future will be bright for every Hornet. Reporting for Hornet Nation, I'm Hallie Fox. Back to you in the studio. Since 1972, Title IX has been ensuring equality for all student athletes regardless of gender. Thanks, Hallie, for making us more familiar with Title IX and how it affects Saline athletics. Now for some current scores. Maddie Murphy scored three goals as the water polo team beat Ann Arbor Huron 6-4 on April 26th. The soccer team faced Huron on the 25th, winning 2-0. Emma Wright and Annika Dahlman scored for Celine. As last season's state runner-up, the baseball team prepared for another run at the playoffs. In his 25th year of coaching, Scott Tyson tells us about his history here at Celine. Welcome to another segment of Coach's Corner. I'm joined today by Mr. Scott Tyson, head coach of the varsity baseball team here at Sleen. How are you today, Coach? Good. Thanks for having me. All right, glad to hear it. Now, we're here to find out a little bit about you today, so let's jump right into the big question, which is, how did you get into baseball? Uh, it was just something I played all through my childhood growing up, and then uh, when I went away to school, uh, went to a bigger school that I wasn't good enough to play at, so I started coaching high school baseball while I was attending college. Cool. So what led you to be the Celine baseball coach? Well, I was uh, back in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I coached at a, in Wild Lake School District, and I also taught there. And number one, I came to Celine to be a teacher. Uh, but when I came here in 91, uh, I coached freshman baseball. And then in 93, the head job opened up, and I applied and got the job. What is kind of like your coaching method? Like how do you coach your kids? Number one, I think we try to prepare them as best we can in terms of what decisions they have to make and how to approach the game, and then also maybe how to handle failure, because more than any other sport, I think baseball is one that you fail a lot at, and you, you can't let that eat you up. Before your games or after practice, what's something that you really like to tell your team and get in their heads? You know, it, it varies from game to game, depending on who we're playing, what kind of game it might be. but. Maybe one common theme is that we want we want constant effort. We want them to show up to the park like they would in the toughest game or the easiest game, the same manner, and to prepare themselves to be ready to play as best they can. All right, I think that's all we have for you then. So thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Yeah. Uh, that's it for another episode of Coach's Corner. Back to you in the studio. The baseball team plays to come see at home tomorrow at noon. Stop by to see the team in action. The 7-2 girls softball team faced off against Ann Arbor Huron 
on Monday in this Game of the Week. Coming off a close second place finish at the Hornet Invitation over the weekend, the Celine Varsity softball team looked to improve on Monday night against Huron River. Starting pitcher Emily Baldas looked to rebound from her last outing where she pitched six innings but gave up five runs on nine hits and allowed three walks. Huron got on the board early with a one-out RBI single in the top of the first. Celine was quick to answer in the bottom of the inning with a single to center by Brooke Bauer that evened the score at 1-1. to the score would remain the same until the bottom of the third, when Kelsey Alexander hit a hard line drive up the middle to bring home Ashley Heron from second. The Hornets' offense exploded in the fourth inning, where they loaded the bases before scoring four runs to give them a 6-1 lead. Baldus was able to pitch around a double in the sixth as she continued to silence the River Rats. Celine added two more runs on airs in the bottom of the inning, and Baldus closed out her complete game in the seventh to preserve the 8-1 Celine victory. She allowed only six hits, one walk, and struck out one here on batter. With another strong performance from the Hornets, we look forward to seeing more success in this team's future. I'm James Donis, back to you in the studio. In the second game of the doubleheader, Alex Pace pitched seven innings, only allowing seven hits as Celine won 6-4. to four. The softball team's next game is tomorrow the 29th against Clay High School at home. It will be a doubleheader with the first game starting at 10. Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Tune in next week for a recap of the wheelchair basketball game and in their shoes with special guest Zach Plisko from SHS Today and another edition of The Rant Room with Nathan Stearns. Have a great weekend, Hornets.